Hey everyone, so you probably heard that the new version of Reactor allows you to load your own user blocks into a rack. Um, so we wanted to do a quick video to walk you through taking an existing block from the Reactor library and adding front panel ports to make it a user block. Okay, so I'll start by going to the Reactor user library and searching for some blocks like this. This block here, the acid filter, I know it's a cool block, so I'm going to add some front panel ports to this one. And while I'm here, I'm also going to grab some pre-made panels, which, are, which have the strips for the ports down the sides. I'm going to do a search for ports. This first one's the one I want, blocks, panels and ports. Okay, so now I'm going to edit the block. First, I'm going to select New Ensemble. Um, and you'll need to be in Ensemble mode, not Wrap mode, to do any editing to the block. Grab the block from the Downloads folder. And drop it into Reactor like this to open it. The blocks have two different views when they're used in racks. Compact view, which has the ports hidden, and ports view. Compact view lets you turn off the clutter once you, your creation is all patched up using ports view. You can select which view you want to edit by going to the view menu. Here in ensemble mode, the ports view is called B view. So let's select B view. The first thing I want to do is change the background panel to one of the panels that I just downloaded that have the strips on each side for the ports. I can do that in the instrument properties. Oh, each block is actually a reactor instrument. If I click on the blocks header and select the properties tab by clicking up here, you can see I have four different sub tabs for modifying the instruments properties. I need to select the view tab. I also need to make sure I'm changing the panel for the B view and not the A view by clicking on B here. Next to background image, I'm going to select open from file. Then I'll go to my downloads folder where I downloaded the panel files just a minute ago. I'm going to pick this turquoise one as I think it looks pretty close to the existing panel. So you click OK. Now I need to make the panel wider to accommodate the ports. I can do that by changing the minimum width setting for the instrument here. So I'm going to type 308, since I know it's the correct width for this particular size of block. So that's looking pretty good. If you download the official blocks template from the user library, there's also a document in there that tells you things like the exact dimensions for all the blocks and exactly how many pixels you should have between the ports. Or you can just load up any of the native instrument template blocks and use them as a guide to get everything lined up and set to the correct size. Okay, while I'm here, it's important that you remember to remove the border padding from around the edge of the panel as we want our ports to be able to go right up to the edge. So let's set both left and right borders to zero. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is move all the controls a little bit to the right. I'm going to open up the block by double clicking on its icon, then double clicking the panel macro. Now I can select all the controls and knobs and I'm going to select everything except this macro here at the top. This is a dummy macro that specifies the boundary of the panel. So I want to move everything except this macro so that all the controls move relative to its position. So I just drag with the mouse to select like this. And I'm going to hold the shift key to select the rest of the knobs like this. Now I'm going to make sure snap to grid is off in the menu so I can have fine control. Click on the padlock icon to unlock the panel elements so they can be moved. 
And I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to shift all the controls to the right like this. So that's about right. So now all I need to do is add the ports. I can click here on the breadcrumb trail to go up a level to where the ports are. Then click on each port. And in the properties for the port here, you can see a parameter called visible. Just switch that on. Again, make sure you have B selected, not A. I don't want the label to show as I'm gonna add my own labels, so you can switch that off. Do the same thing for all the other ports. And the last one. Now all my ports are stacked up on top of each other. So I need to spread them out. And here's an easy trick to get them lined up so that they match the other blocks. So first select all the ports you want to move down. Click up here to move focus over to the panel. Then I'm going to hold down shift to get course movement and press the down arrow on my keyboard four times. Then letting go of shift, I'm going to press up once to move them up by one pixel. Then I'll select the next set of ports, leaving one of them behind before moving these down by the same amount. Hold shift, one, two, three, four, and then back up by one pixel. And again for the other ports, like this. And this output port, I'm going to move this over to the right. Now I'm going to add the bento oscillator so I can use that block as a guide to make sure I have all the ports in the right place. I'll click on the global icon so you can see all the installed factory blocks. The bento box folder, drag over the oscillator block. And I can see I need to bring my ports down a bit to match the bento oscillator. Just a bit of adjusting here. And that looks pretty good. Now click the lock icon to lock the panel again. So now I want to add the labels under the ports. I'm gonna take the labels from the bento filter as I know it has the same port names as this block. So I can save some time by not having to retype the names, which is good. So let's grab that. Go up a level like this. Going inside the block, I can grab the labels like this. These text items here. I only need the top label on the right hand side. Copy selection. Go back to our block. Open it up and paste our labels. As you can see, they're, they are quite faint, so I'm going to change the font colour. Select the first label. Under view, I'm going to select choose font colour. And select this light grey. And do the same for all the other labels. Unlock the panel and line these up with the arrow keys, comparing them with the labels on the bento blocks to make sure they're in the right place. And there you go, it's done. Now I just need to save the block into my user blocks folder so I can use it in my racks. 
So just right click on the blocks header and select save instrument as, then navigate to the user blocks folder. It should be in the reactor six folder and you can see the path here. So go into blocks and hit save. Okay, now let's take it for a test drive. So file, new rack. And since we've already saved it, we can click no. Now click the magnifying glass icon to go to the browser. Then click the user icon so we can see the user blocks folder. And there's our acid filter. Now let's go back to the factory icon and select the bento oscillator. Wire it up. And play with the knobs. Nice. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Um, there's hundreds of blocks in the user library and as you can see, it's quite easy to add ports to them. And you can even convert whole instruments to using your racks in a similar way. So that's all for now. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.